Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, my name is Lionel, and I'm your host for LT Productions. And you are watching I Watch You Watch. Uh, we are covering, I know, I know, I know, uh, The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Um, this is season five, episode one, and what a premiere it has been. <laughs> um, I appreciate everyone for coming to my channel. Please like this video in support of me, and you can go on and subscribe if you are not a subscriber. And you can leave your comments below. Uh, let's get into this episode. However, before we do, I have some things I need to announce, but let's go. All right, so just to let you know, I used to cover Salt Lake City on my old channel, and I also stopped on my old channel. And the reason I did is because I saw a lot of racist stuff happening. This was season two. And I vowed to you all I would never support this show and really, I deemed it to really go to H-E double hockey stick. Um, the show wasn't going anywhere, even after I left. However, the change of events and what I mean by racism, the racism happened towards uh, Mary Cosby, which really caused her not to even come to the reunion. They did not handle her. They had a known racist, even though low-key there's other racists on uh, the show. I didn't see, I didn't see any care. You let this woman attack her and y'all just go on filming. And you guys, Bravo was still going to keep Jenny on the show for season three until somebody found in her Facebook page as to whom she supports and what she has to say about other minor, minorities, specifically black people. I don't know how you miss all of that. Not saying anyone is perfect. But you didn't even, she didn't sweep her page or whatever. And her explanation for everything was such a lie. All of a sudden she comes around. I do have black friends. That don't cut it. Um, things turn around. Miss Mary, she came back season four. And she was allowed to just get off of her chest. Exactly. I'm glad that she did. <laughs> I really am. Um. I'm kind of more trusting Mary at this point. She came back this year and she is a full-time person, um, full-time housewife. She was friend of last season. And you would have thought, okay, well, maybe that's her last goodbye. No, she decided to come on full-time. The acts were done against her. And she felt safe enough to come back to the show. And I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to trust Mary through this process. Hopefully there is nothing else that comes up However, I am reviewing this season and watching this season, of course. All right, so that's my little disclaimer. I just kind of wanted to let you know where I am and what I did say. I do. I am accountable for what I did say. I stand on what I said, and I don't regret <laughs> stop watching this show and reviewing this show. I'm just more walking with Mary on her new journey, and hopefully it stays that way. All right, so let's get into this episode. Lisa, uh, she's having an event. Uh, first, I want to say that intro, excellent. <laughs> they are giving, look, between Beverly Hills and also um, Salt Lake City, it's quite entertaining cinema as they give it to us. I'm like, Lord, truly original could never. But those are the people that handle Atlanta and Potomac. Let's, uh, we'll see what they do over there. I still stand on Potomac. I'll never review that show and not really support that show. I have watched clips on last season. However, no. <laughs> uh, no. And y'all know my reasoning on that. So anyways. Um, Lisa's holding an event. And it's called a Bezos party. I guess Bezos is meaning little kisses. Um, this is after the reunion, but months later after the reunion. Um, it's kind of this Valentine's Day type situation. Um she wasn't, she was indecisive on inviting Whitney. Um, she was talking with Heather and also Angie about it. We get a little flashback on that because of what Whitney was doing on a podcast. It seems like what we're getting is that a lot of things weren't resolved during the reunion and they still needed to be handled. Um, I think a lot of time was handled on Monica. Look, I'm going to say this much. Shout out to Miss Monica Garcia because she did have impact on season four. It helped bring life back to the franchise. 
I'm going to give her that. Considering what we do know about her, no. She doesn't need to come back. And I think Monica wasn't humble. You did not want to apologize for all of the chaos that you did cause. I think the only thing you apologized about really suggesting the stuff about um, Angie's husband being a gay, and that was it. When Andy handed you out a lifeline, you did not take it. And then you went on this interview parade to try to, you're really trying to sway social media. And you think that that is the only way that you're going to be able to get people to get you back on the show. They could, Bravo could as a fool, get you back on, but whatever. <laughs> I don't care about you. Not for real. I. It's how you are. You infiltrated a friend group. You knew what you were doing. You knew what you had going on. And you're not sorry about it. And you found other ways and other people that you can use to try to sway to get you back on the show. Is it going to work? I don't know. We're going to have to really see how the ratings are. However, we don't know the totality of the ratings. And that's just that on that. Um, anybody comparing last year? Last year, ratings wasn't that great either. Because a lot of people still had tuned out. And they caught on to the Monica, whatever, about mid midway through the season. So, I don't know. I don't know, but I know social media gonna going to be windmilling for you. Oh, well. I don't think you deserve to come back. No. Get some humility, but it's not going to be there. Because I know your strategy, girl. All right, so we find out that Mary and Angie. Angie is someone that kind of snuck in on us as to being a good housewife because it, it really reeked of desperation. It's like, you can go. She somehow turned it around during mid-season of last season and kind of won us over one a good majority of us over i think somehow she can be a little, a little bit desperate um as far as even some of the things that she does i'm like but then she usually has these type of, of reads <laughs> like oh okay go ahead angie so anyways mary and angie um how they became besties is after angie said that you have lipstick on uh on your teeth or something to that nature um and I was like, what? For real? Because <laughs> Mary was only trusting of Meredith. And we already know what happened. If you're on social media, you know that there was a fallout between Mary and Meredith. There's even something in the trailer where you see that something happened. And I hate that this happened. Because Mary and Meredith are my only people that I go up for on this show. <laughs> Brown may be another one, but we'll see how she is during the season. But I'm just like, oh, please fix it, Jesus. Uh, so, the day of the party, Lisa's Hosting, uh, which is Basil's party again. Um, Mary's already showed up with Angie. They have their little moment about them being besties. Whitney, I mean, uh, Heather shows up. And Mary was like, you look thin. You look thin. Heather's in her confessional like, wow, I've went from inbred to thin. So maybe that there is a start of a beautiful relationship. I don't think Mary's going to see it for you, Heather. She might just back up off of you, but eh, we shall see. Then, as I was speaking of just a few minutes ago, there's a new housewife. Her name is Brownwin. We know another Brownwin from OC, which I did love until she crashed out. I wish she hadn't crashed out, but I loved her. But anyways, Brownwin is over the top and she admits it. Um, she is in a relationship. Her husband is 65 and she's like 30 something. Um, just like they showed this old clip of when Brahman was meeting up with Lisa. This is Lisa's friend. But first, before we get to the old clip, Lisa was introduced to Brahman subtly. Lisa was at some type of event and seeing the type of outfit she had on. I think she complimented Brahman on it, but saw how Lisa was dressed and she was basically shunned her. Brahman says, you know, I don't remember doing that. However, that's something I would have done. And she laughs in, the, in her confessional. So... Brownwin is that type of rich fish <laughs> where she can just kind of like, who are you and why are you talking to me? If you're not wearing um, 15,000, 15K Dolce and Gabbana, if that is, if there's a price for that, you know? Um, so anyways, we see her meeting uh, Lisa. She's in this like coat and these boy boxers really looking very good in them, but it's like 37 degrees out. Maybe you guys, uh, um, blood is thicker. I'm from the Midwest, so I know all about the cold. 
and now I'm in Florida. So the Floyd weather is kind of like, I can't deal with anything under like 50, 60 degrees because I'm already like, oh, it's chilly. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think our, our blood thins and possibly it's thicker in the northern states if you're dealing with winter. I don't know. Um, she says, you know, how to explain my fashion. I'm kind of dressing like Tim Burton characters. <laughs> you know, like Beetlejuice and all them other characters that he got. So that's interesting. I think he was also what um the, the director for batman and batman returns back in the 90s i think that's who, he, who he's under if, if my memory serves correctly um she has six dogs and their characters from the house of cards i haven't watched that show but of course it was a very good show i think it got nominated and possibly won some emmys and all that um i already talked about she has an older husband who is 65 and she has a daughter and stepchildren Specifically, she was talking with um, Lisa about her daughter, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn and Jack, her uh, um, Lisa's son, who's off doing a mission. They were pretty close. That's how they kind of met as far as uh, on a more um, a more conducive level after what Brahma did to her as far as the outfit. But hey, so we get continue on with the party. Whitney is driving and she says, you know, I don't know how I feel about being around some of these people because a lot of things didn't get resolved during the reunion. Um, and I have put a distance between some of them. Um, Lisa is one of them. So as she's driving, we go back to the party and we're introduced to a friend of the show. Her name is Brittany and she's in relationship with Jerry Osmond. Um, Jerry is a nephew of one of the original Osmond family brothers and, and sister Marie Osmond. I love the Osmonds. I know that they are Utah royalty because I think that they are Mormons also. So, of course, it was the Jacksons and the Osmonds back in the day um, that they had to fight up against each other. Um, what else? Uh, she said that she broke up with him probably like 16 times. So, I don't know where the chaos is, but I have a feeling the chaos is within Brittany because uh, who breaking up with anybody 16 times? And she's like, I love him. I love him. I said, oh, okay. But shout out to the Osmonds anyways. We're going to see what Brittany's all about. Even though she's a friend, so we probably won't get as much as we need. Okay, so Brownlin, Brittany, and Mary, they go sit down. Uh, Brownlin, she comes in with this like heart-shaped mink uh, attire that's over the top. That's who Brownlin is. Lisa says, you know, I'm used to it. So <laughs> if anyone else has anything to say about it, ugh. Everyone had a good response except for Brittany because she felt like Brownwin came in something very costume y. Both Brownwin and Mary said, Oh, no, 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 don't do that. You know, <laughs> this is high fashion. No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Brittany was talking about, you know, I'm used to a certain way of living. Um, Mary talked about her life, um, you know, when she was growing up. Um, she didn't have all that she wanted as far as um, materials, and she kind of buys things. and. Brittany was like, so are you a hoarder? I'm like, no, I'm not a hoarder. Um, and then Brittany was like, well, I didn't know about growing up poor. You know, some of that mentality does happen. And Mary was like, I didn't tell you that I grew up poor. So basically, Brittany, you have earned an enemy or somebody that's just not going to deal with you. Mary ended up excusing herself because she didn't like the conversation. <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. I really hope we do not have another cast member that's weaponizing wealthiness because look, this show and reality TV is about escapism. Specifically for the housewives, we want to see wealth. We want to see the snobbish. We want to see the gutter snipes. We don't want the toxicity. And I think you can still give us a good show without being toxic um, and offensive in a way that's just not conducive. We know, and we don't want that over the topness dark stuff so hey we want to see that um so Brittany, hopefully this is your first and last time trying to down people that have money or or, or whatever because monica tried to do that and i thought monica should have went right then and there last season she held up a good fight but she did that it's like why are you on the show we care not less about you <laughs> basically needing food stamps and on the time card Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, because Brownwin had to defend her coat. She said, you know, this is a 15K dollar coat. Uh, it was a Saint uh, uh, Laurent coat. 
Um, then we move on to Mary and Heather. We find out that Meredith has had some surgery. She's had three breast reductions. It's kind of just like, is that really true? <laughs> but Heather, I mean, Meredith said, yeah. I forgot what size she was and then grew to all this time, even as an adult. So Meredith also talks about, you know, Whitney going into the bath business. Whitney knew what I announced and I'm trying to figure out why she's in uh, the bath business with her line. And that was where I was going to. And she ends up confronting Whitney when Whitney actually makes it there. Um, Whitney does not greet Lisa. How rude. I think Angie is the only one that gave a gift as far as we know on camera, you know, and you know that that is rude not to have any type of, uh, gifts or whatever. So Whitney confront, uh, Meredith confronts Whitney about, you know, you know what I had about the bad situation. So what is your problem with me? And Whitney was like, nothing. Da, 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 da. Um, but the stuff that you do, Meredith was, was like, you're doing these bath bombs. You knew I was going to do that. Whitney was like, I did not know, da, 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 da. And I don't think I, it's really hurtful, Meredith says, and I don't really want to be your friend. <laughs> Whitney was trying to make amends. She's not getting rid of the bath bombs because she wants to act oblivious to everything. Angie is seeing Whitney and Meredith kind of go at it. She's like, well, this is really my opportunity because I heard that Meredith wants me to apologize, but there's a lot of things that I need her to apologize for. So she makes her way over to the whole uh, Whitney and Meredith, if you want to call it, argument. <laughs> and somehow she was able to butt herself in. She was pushing herself in. And she finally turned the conversation off from Whitney and Meredith to her and Meredith. And she said, you know, um, I've been hearing that you want an apology and all that. And I can give it to you. But I need an apology for things that you have said. And Meredith was like, for what? Like what? <laughs> so Angie all of a sudden pulls out this scroll. And she's got a long list of stuff. I was like, cheesy. It kind of worked, but I was like, Angie. But she ended up shading Meredith at the end, you know. <laughs> she ended up saying something about, you know, worry about your, uh, it, it was brought up, I think Meredith was like, worry about your house, and da, 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 what goes on there. And Angie was like, yes, I'm going to worry about my house and what's going on there. Um, and you stop worrying about what's going on in my house because you're a renter. I'm like, okay, that was a nice dig. She did it. She she whacked her. I mean, come on. <laughs> I like that. I like that type of read. Um, Meredith is my girl, but she did kind of whack you there. And I got to admit it, even though some things I don't like about Angie, but overall, I think I do like Angie. So, hey, we learned a little bit about Brown Brownwin. Okay, so now we go over to this dinner that Lisa's having. <clears throat> Brownman is very similar to Whitney. So I think this is probably the couple that's going to work out right because we know about Whitney and Justin. They were having an affair. They were both married and within the Mormon church, they had an affair. Their marriage just dissolved. And I think that they were kicked out of the Mormon church. Um, we don't know anything about Brownman's religion, but I think she did say something about religion. Um, but anyways... She has a stepchild who is older than her because Whitney was comparing notes between her relationship. Um, but Brownwin has one older and Whitney is about five years younger. I thought, wow. Brownwin said in a confessional, you know, I don't wake up every morning and think of my husband's age. I'm like, well, Brownwin. <laughs> Brownwin. I would think that there were some things that you would really think about age, probably sexually. Um, does he have as, as much energy as you as being a 35 or 30 something year old woman and not just sexually, you know, <laughs> I mean, I would think that you would really have some type of mindset on some of the things that you probably are interested in doing, at least on a more moderate uh, way. Just saying, um, at the party, Angie and Meredith, they're going at it a little bit still. She's yapping. I mean, Angie is one that's just not going to let up and. She's kind of like that person, like, look, I'm going to get the last word in, in a way. Um, Meredith dismisses her some more. And Lisa and Whitney finally have their talk. I think Whitney ended up asking, you know, is there a problem? I heard that you have a problem, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Lisa, you were saying some things on the podcast. And Whitney was like, well, what did I say? Because you're acting like I made the whole podcast about you. 
and Lisa was like, you know what you said, you can't just act like you da 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 da. Well, the things that you're going around town saying about me, I did hear about it. And Lisa was like, well, who told you? Whitney wasn't answering. The only two people that I talked to that could have told you was either her or her. And it was Heather and um, Angie. We get a flashback. Angie goes to Whitney's home. She just got a new home. And Angie brought up to Whitney what Lisa was saying. And result to the to the um, podcast that Whitney did. And Lisa was not going to go on until someone admitted it. Heather said, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything to Whitney. So she, <laughs> I kind of have this in the back of my mind when Heather said, I didn't say anything to Whitney. <laughs> so you said something to someone else, Heather? I don't know, but whatever. <clears throat> so Angie just kind of just stepped up and, and finally admitted after Lisa was like, well, then it was you. Why would you do that? How come you're not backing me up? I said, wait a minute, Lisa. These are the same words that you had last season about Angie. If you think Angie is your friend, I don't think she is. If she was so willing to play telephone, and it took her a while to even admit that she was the one that told Whitney anything. So then Lisa and Angie are going at it. It's like, you really want to put yourself into this? You really want to put yourself into this? <laughs> and Angie's like, no, da, 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 da. It's like, this is really between me and, and Whitney, and you should have had my back. All I got to say is, with, um, Lisa, you need to learn from this. Angie is not your, your bona fide friend. Sorry. So Lisa goes back into rat -ta 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 on um, Whitney. <laughs> Whitney does not like it to be accountable for stuff. Um, Whitney was like, what did I do wrong? And... Lisa's telling her, da, 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 and she's like, no, I didn't. And you're such a liar, Lisa. And then Whitney was like, I am not a liar. Mary this time's in, Heather time's in, and they go full-fledged on her. And then she tried to turn around and use her trauma, saying that Whitney was trying to um, weaponize her trauma. I think Lisa said, you know, go heal yourself. Because of the stuff that the girl was saying, Whitney was saying, that it was like, um, no. <laughs> you're not healed wherever your healing process is you're still doing the same things and i will say this about whitney i'm glad first for the whacking uh, she gets away with a lot of stuff they brought up the stuff that she insinuated even with saying that accused meredith of faking her dad's memorial i thought that was so crazy oh i was oh you deserve a beat, beat down i talked about um mary was accusing her of being in, in a cult and something else about mary da, 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 da. um she was trying to deny it. It's like, no, I got railed into your stuff. No. Whitney, we're talking about you and you're not being accountable. So towards the end of everything, you know, Lisa was like, you're always judging us and being this like mother morally superior since your whole healing journey. And you are still with the ish. So then Whitney finally just says, you know, my response to everything is just F you. She flips her off and just says, I'm not going to be here and to be attacked. Da -da 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 -da. And I'm going to be leaving. And then Angie was like, no, stay. So, but Whitney leaves and she's saying to um, Lisa as she's walking out the door, I'm strong. I'm this. I'm that. Da, 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 da. Whatever. And Angie follows her out the door. Lisa says, Angie, if you're following her, good. Go. Don't come back. Boom. Because Lisa did excuse her from the, the party anyways, but or the dinner anyway. So it was interesting. Um, what I will give this episode, 10 for 10, how we know. Salt Lake City is, is that they'll give us this grind first episode and then it just <laughs> crashes and burns. Hopefully it's not that way this season. The trailer really looks good. So I want to say this. It feels like Miami. And you know I love Miami. The Real Housewives of Miami. The bickering, the fighting. It's not that deep, really. So they're just dip, 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 dip all the time. They've had so many confrontations in just one episode, a group event during the first episode bravo but right now you guys you have positive feedback from me and i'm glad um but y'all give me your comments below um i appreciate everyone for coming to my channel what are you looking forward to this season <laughs> give me that in, in the comments below please like this video and also subscribe until the next one peace